guys. We have two special birthdays of two special BKFK patrons to celebrate. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to happy birthday to you. Elliot. And Elise. We hope you guys have the best birthday ever. And we hope you guys enjoyed your BKFK birthday bundles just as much as we enjoyed creating them for you. Remember, listeners, you can get an amazing personalized BKFK audiobook with the child of your choice as the star of the story. It can be a story with monsters, with nursery rhyme characters, or all of our favorite BKFK characters and creatures. To find out more, just go to buykids4kids.co and click on Birthday Bundle. In today's story, we are joined by some wonderful new voices. Hi, I'm Will. I'm eight years old. I live in Amherst, Massachusetts, and I really like dogs. Hello, my name is Takshri. I'm from India. I have my own podcast named Story Glory on Spotify. Hi, my name is Nicholas, and I am six years old, and I live in Washington, D.C., and I like playing with my Lego. Hi, my name is Santi and I'm from Australia and I like soccer. Thank you guys, you did an awesome job. Okay, Ruby, let's get on with the story. The King Who Wanted to Touch the Moon. Once upon a time in a faraway land called Quakenbush, there lived a king named Alonso. King Alonso was a haughty king and very proud of his kingdom. He walked out onto the top balcony of his palace and looked out over his lands and said to his advisor, How wonderful we are! What a perfect kingdom! It is the happiest place in the world. Indeed it is, sir, said his advisor. Everyone has enough to eat, they have a comfy place to live, and they work and play just the right amount. The king frowned and paused for a moment. Yes, of course, that's all very well. But what I mean is, we are the best. The best at everything. Well, I'm not sure about everything, said the advisor cautiously. But we certainly are very happy. Very happy, very schmappy. We must be the best. I need to know that we are the greatest. That I am the most noble and majestic king of the most successful and powerful land. For instance, we have the tallest buildings, correct? Yes, sir. And the prettiest rivers? I suppose so. Of course we do. We have the most talented artists, the best storytellers, the cleverest scientists, the biggest army, the fastest horses, the the tastiest pancakes, the, the biggest ships. Oh, uh, that's not entirely true, sir. I beg your pardon? Well, the kingdom of Othana have the Nautilus 5000. It's, it's longer than Enough. us. Enough! Get me the master builder at once. Soon enough, the builder came rushing into the king's chamber, red-faced and out of breath. Oh, at your service, my lord. He panted. The king raised his hands above his head and said in a loud voice, I demand the biggest and most powerful ship in the world. And so the builder gathered his team. They soared and drilled and hammered until eventually they led the king down to the dock and presented their creation. A monumental, humongous, gigantic boat. Yes! Said the king. Yes, yes, yes! We have the biggest and the best ships. All will look to us with admiration. Just look around. We have the most impressive harbor. We have the most colorful balloons. We have the tastiest food. We have the tallest mountain. We have... <laughs> That's not entirely true, my lord, said the advisor. 
the king glared at him. Not entirely true? He snapped. The advisor looked sheepishly away. Well, spit it out, man, spit it out. I'm afraid that Mount Clatterback in the kingdom of Wigglesworth is three yards higher than our mighty mountain. The king stamped his foot. Get me the master builder! He roared. Soon enough, in rushed the master builder. I order you to raise our mountain by four yards. He bellowed. And so the master builder gathered his team. They dug and dug and filled large wooden chests with soil. They loaded these chests on wagons and they drove up the steep and rocky mountain path and dumped their loads at the highest point. Slowly but surely, the mountain grew higher and higher. At last, their work was done. The king stood on the top of the mountain and cried, Ha ha, we have the highest mountain. We have the best builders. We have the most wagons. Advisor, you must admit, can you think of anything we can't do? Anything at all? Uh, no, your majesty, said the advisor. Nothing at all. Yes! Roared the king, raising his fists to the evening sky. We are the best! We are! He paused. Above him, he saw the full moon shining down. I've got it. He muttered. I know how we can show the whole world how powerful we are. He looked at his advisor with a crazed look on his face. You build a tower and touch the moon. But it can't be done, your majesty, whimpered the advisor. What nonsense, builder, bring me that wooden chest from your wagon. The builder did as he was told. The king stood on the chest. Good, and now bring me another one and put it on top of the first one. The builder brought the next chest and the king climbed on top of the pile. Excellent, bring me all the chests from the wagons. The builder and his team stacked all the wooden chests on top of each other. The king climbed on top, but it was still not high enough. More! He called down. We don't have any more! Cried the master builder. Then find some more! So the master builder and his team led the wagons down the mountain and sent out a messenger through the city. Bring out your chests! He called out. Chests for the king! Bring out your chests! Chests for the king! The townsfolk carried out all of their chests. Wooden chests, metal chests, big chests, small chests, and every kind of chest imaginable. Wagon after wagon was loaded, and up the mountain they went. And at the top, the master builder stacked them on the ever-growing pile of chests. By now, the king was high above the clouds. More! He demanded. We have no more! Said the master builder. Pardon? I said we had no more! Well, make some more, you fool! So the master builder and his team rushed down the mountain. They chopped and sawed and hammered and drilled until there was nothing left in the kingdom with which they could make a chest. They led the tired horses back up the mountain and eventually reached the top. They stacked chest upon chest upon chest. The king called from high above. Almost there, bring me more! I'm afraid not, your majesty! Called the builder. What nonsense! There must be more! This really is everything! Then take one from the bottom and bring it up! But your highness, the tower will... Silence! Just do as you're told! The 
builder knew the king's pride had finally made him blind to even the most obvious facts. But the king was in such a state that there was nothing to be done but do as the king commanded. So the builder began to pull the chest from the bottom of the tower. It was tightly wedged under the weight of all the other chests. The builder called his team and they pushed and heaved and grunted and groaned until out popped the chest. In an instant, the tower toppled over. All of the chests came tumbling down with a huge crash and clattered down the mountain to the town below. When every chest had fallen, the builder was afraid to look for the king. But the king was thankfully not badly injured. He returned to his royal duties with a very different attitude. From that day on, he listened to his advisors. He listened to his builder. In fact, he was grateful for all of the advice he could get. By working together with his people, peace was restored to his kingdom. Were they the best? Were they the most powerful? Perhaps not, but they were as happy as could be. Hey guys, if you like this episode, please share it with your friends and family. It is one of the best ways to support BKFK Storytime.